three, two, one. Okay, we're back with Pro Wrestling this week, and we're on the phone with the former WWF Intercontinental Champion. Uh, many feel one of the top five wrestlers in the entire world, the British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith. Davey, how you doing? Pretty good, are you? Hanging in there, hanging there, getting ready for the holidays up here in New York. And uh, I guess for you, uh, this will be the first time uh, during this holiday season that you'll have some time off. That's right. I've been really busy with uh, Titan Sports World Wrestling Federation for the past couple of years, and uh, I think this will be my first Christmas. I'm going to actually spend at home on my first New Year's. I'm going to spend at home with my family, and my mother and father come flying in from England to see me too for Christmas. So that must be a different feeling for you because, of course, the schedules uh, in the two major organizations, especially in Titan Sports, uh, always on the go, traveling worldwide. And uh, we're going to get right down to it. Uh, a lot of people were shocked in the wrestling business, the fans, some of the insiders who follow the, the sport very closely about uh, why Davey Boy Smith was uh, no longer with the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, can you tell us why the departure? Um, there was a few reasons. You know, we had, you know, uh, I talked with Vince. We, you know, we're still good friends and good on, on good terms. Um, the door's always open if I want to go back in the World Wrestling Federation. That was the last conversation I had with Vince. But um, my feelings were, as far as the European uh, tours went, that um, I wasn't being used really as good as I should have been, you know. Um, um, as far as appearances went, you know, I had a lot of people wanting the British Bulldog, you know, to appear at uh, autograph sessions in uh, England and in Europe, uh, on TV shows, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And every time they asked for me, they would uh, get no for an answer. You know, they said they couldn't have the British Bulldog. You could have this wrestler, you could have that wrestler, but the British Bulldog wasn't available. You know, and I felt that... Um, had, I, this happened over... I'm sorry, this happened over in Europe. They were requesting you and... Yeah, they were requesting me for uh, things over in Europe, and uh, it, was the feed, it was getting back, you know, the feedback was coming back to me, saying, you know, we want you, but uh, Titan Sports won't let it, won't let you go. But we can have this wrestler, and we can have that wrestler, but you can't, we can't have the British Bulldog. And, and every time I wanted to set up something for myself in Europe, and in, in England, I would say, you know, rather than Europe. I mean, England is part of Europe, but just in England, my hometown, um, they, you know, they were still saying, no, you can't have the British Bulldog, and I felt that I was being held back in my home country for some reason, and nobody would give me a reason why. Well, that certainly is very strange, just due to the fact that the tremendous match you had over at SummerSlam uh, at Wembley Stadium in that sold-out arena when you uh, captured the uh, Intercontinental title from Bret Hart, the last match of the card, a crowd going crazy, and especially that the WWF right now, uh, they're most successful market is the European market. It's just very strange that uh, they won't have uh, uh, the wrestlers that, that's perceived in Europe as the number one guy doing promotional appearances to help enhance the promotion. Well, it, it seems to me that um, the, the reason why is because I, I don't think they wanted me to get too too powerful, too strong in England, you know. Uh -huh. I thought maybe I'd go off and do my own thing if I got too powerful, which I wouldn't do. You know, I'm a, I'm a man of my word, and... Um, I'm always told that uh, Vince straight up how I feel, and he's always told me straight up how he feels, and uh, we didn't uh, come to a mutual agreement on this, so you know, we had to, I had to part from the World Wrestling Federation for a while, you know, and uh, I feel that it's, it's best sometimes that, you know, a wrestler does this in the World Wrestling Federation, especially someone like me, you know, I did it before, and, you know, and I'm doing it right now, you know. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to do my own thing right now in England, and... Uh, do my thing independently and, uh, you know, go to Japan. I've got a good deal coming up in Japan this year, and um, I just want to do Japan for a while again. Not many wrestlers can, can go to Japan and like Japan. A lot of wrestlers complain about, you know, the way Japan situation is and the food, but I like it over there. It's my kind of country, so I'm used to it, so that's where I want to be right now. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess, your first tour will be coming, uh, taking place when, in March? Yeah, uh, last end of February, beginning of March. My first tour will be in the first four weeks of March. And that will be for uh, the Baba Group or the Inoki Group? Uh, for Baba Group. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the um, situation with the WWF over in Europe right now, of course, uh, they're selling out arenas left and right. Now, I, w I wanted you to comment on a situation. Uh, Lennox Lewis, who is the uh, number one uh, challenger right now for the Boxing World title, uh, he t carried the flag to uh, to the to the ringside area at SummerSlam. I understand there was a situation where uh, they wanted you to do the same for him in his last yeah, match was, there. That was one of my things. Um, 
you know, when I when I fought for the belt in the, the SummerSlam, Lennox Lewis carried the, the British flag for me across Wembley Stadium, and um, I was uh, approached by members of the uh, Sky Television in England and uh, members of the World Wrestling Federation that, um, as a favour to, to Lennox Lewis, would I carry the flag for him when he fought Razor Ruddock? You know, and I said, you know, it'd be my pleasure. You know. Yeah. And. Um, I waited and waited and waited, and they kept telling me, yeah, you're going to be carrying the flag. And right before that weekend came, I said, what about this Lennox Lewis fight? And they said, oh, we're not sending you now to England. Uh, you're going to be, uh, you know, uh, just you're going to be wrestling that day, so we can't send you, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was pretty annoyed at that, you know, because, you know, they're the ones that, you know, suggested. I, didn't, I wasn't the one, you know, brought it up. They, they asked me what I'd do as a favor to him. And I said, yes, I would. And then they, they uh, canceled me out of the deal, you know. And then it just so happened that that weekend I was supposed to carry the flag. Um, the shows got cancelled for the WWF, you know. Mm-hmm. So I could have still went over there and carried the flag because there was no show that day, on that weekend, I should say, on Saturday and Sunday. Both shows got cancelled. So that was one of my arguments again. But um, it just doesn't really seem to make sense. Out of that deal with Lennox Lewis, you know. Yeah, we've been trying to get uh, statements uh, from uh, the World Wrestling Federation on your departure, and uh, it was quoted in the Charleston, South Carolina newspaper. Mike uh, Mooneyham does a wrestling column. Uh, Steve Planament had uh, quoted, been quoted as saying in the paper there uh, that you were terminated for unprofessional conduct. Conduct, rather. Uh, do you have any statement or any? Uh, uh, Anything you could say uh, regarding Planamenta's statement in the press? Well, um, I, I'm not really too familiar with, with Steve Planamenta. I've not really had uh, many conversations with uh, this gentleman in the World Wrestling Federation. He's kind of like a mouthpiece over there. Uh, yeah, I, that's what I hear. Yeah, because I heard it. Uh, he said something about uh, I had a problem before. There's been, a, you know, there's been a few rumors that, you know, unpro- when they say unprofessional conduct, what do they mean? Uh, maybe I wrecked a hotel room, or um, they don't. Be, they're not very specific on that. I that's that's kind of their standard answer when uh, someone leaves the organization. Is that, all right, well, he was gone. He's gone for unprofessional conduct. Yeah, I just don't. I just don't know. Um, you know, nobody said to me, "Davy, you're finished," or "Davy, you're fired from the World Wrestling Federation." You know, um, I said that I was unhappy. As my situation went right now in the World Wrestling Federation, but as far as unprofessional conduct goes, there was no, no such thing. And then there was another rumor about uh, maybe uh, something about maybe failing a drug test for steroids. That was uh, uh, out of the question entirely. You know, I never failed no drug test mm-hmm. for uh, for steroid use or you know anything to do with steroids in the World Wrestling Federation. That was brought up too in one of the uh, I don't know what you call them the scam sheets or. Mm-hmm. Inside, you know, whatever the wrestling observer has to print up, that was never the situation at all with me and Vince McMahon. You know, um, I left on friendly terms, and you know, he speaks highly of me. You know, and uh, you know, I speak highly of him because you know he, he he treated me well as far as up until the SummerSlam. You know, and um, after that, then I was I thought I was being mistreated again, so I thought I'd leave. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, there's been a lot of guys have left previously over money disputes in the World Wrestling Federation, uh, in particular in regard to some of the payoffs that come after some of the pay-per-view shows. Uh, As far as the SummerSlam uh, uh, situation, uh, have you uh, settled uh, your account with the WWF on that on that big show? Um, Not not up to not as of right now. No, Uh not no. Um, I believe it's going to be settled pretty soon, but um, I've not been not settled up as of right now, you know. Now, you, you've been on the road with them for, for a long time, and uh, the stress on the road, and uh, right now the houses are down, and, and the wrestlers are paid, obviously, uh, on the gates, and so there's not enough uh, money going around. There's certainly not enough being made by the wrestlers right now as there were, you know, three, four years ago. Yeah. Uh, what is the... Uh, the uh, I was I would guess the atmosphere and the the head of some of the wrestlers competing now in the federation. We hear rumors every day that uh, guys like Big Boss Man uh, taking sabbaticals and uh, this guy wants out and this guy is leaving and Earthquake is leaving in January. Uh, is there a, a, a general consensus in the back uh, with the guys that uh, hey maybe it's time to start looking for some greener pastures? Um. There's, there's always talk, you know, about um, that, that that kind of thing in, in in the WWF. You know, you know, sometimes somebody's not happy. Um, 
you know, I hear a lot of wrestlers, you know, maybe saying, oh, well, you know, I don't like this thing, I don't like this payoff. But, you know, the World Wrestling Federation is the World Wrestling Federation, and um, it's either that or, the, or the, the World Championship Wrestling. You know, it's, there's only two wrestling federations right now that are doing really well. And the number one, as far as I know, is, uh, is the WWF. And um, what, I, what I'd say to them is if they don't like it, you know, is to do what I did and just, you know, leave for a while. Yeah. That's the best thing what, what I can say um, as far as that goes. But um, not enough of the wrestlers do that. They complain but don't do anything about it. Have you any? T- have you had any talk with the Turner Group, WCW? No, I haven't. No, no. Because <laughs> they're going over to Europe also in March, and uh, uh, that would certainly put their tour over the top if they could secure your appearance there. And as well as I'm sure that uh, uh, other independent uh, uh, promoters are contacting you as well, because the name of Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog, overseas right now, especially in the UK, uh, would mean an instant sellout. Uh, I understand that you're getting an awful lot of press overseas right now in the UK. Okay. Uh, can you uh, tell us some of the uh, recent uh, press that you've been getting over there? Um, I got the uh, the newspaper, the Daily Mirror. I'm in pretty good with uh, those people. I'm in pretty good with uh, the newspaper called The Sun. It's one of the biggest, or the biggest newspaper in the United Kingdom. Um, yeah, I was talking to one of, uh, I do a premium phone line overseas, and uh, I understand that uh, this past week there was a, matter of fact, this weekend, one of the major papers there had a uh, three-page spread on you, and uh, I believe there's one of the TV books over there had you on the cover uh, over this past week, and uh, so your name is pretty predominant right now overseas. Yeah, you know, the, um, even though the, everybody knows now in the United Kingdom and Europe that have left the World Wrestling Federation, not knowing her long fall, um, but um, the newspapers still want to keep me strong in England, you know, because I'm a hero to all the kids in in, uh, in England. You know, the kids really look up to the British Bulldog. Yeah. I'm the only Brit who was in the World Wrestling Federation who has the uh, physique and the wrestling ability to back it up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're really behind me 100%. So, the, you know, the newspapers called me and said that uh, they'd heard from a member of the World Wrestling Federation, I think it was uh, the mouth again, Planamenta, saying that I was fired for unprofessional conduct and they didn't want to print that in the newspaper because they didn't want to ruin my name, so could I please tell them the story behind it, you know, so they actually had uh, a highly uh, recommended news reporter fly from uh, England and uh, come over and and interview me in my my own home in uh, Tampa, Florida, Mm -hmm. and take pictures of my house and my bike and, you know, my jet ski and things like that, pool. I wanted to know the the background of the World Wrestling Federation, you know, and I told them truthfully as, and as much as I could about the World Wrestling Federation and the wrestling situation right now. And just wanted to fill in the wrestling fans, let them know that the British Bulldog's still alive in the United Kingdom and I'll be back one yeah. of these days, you know. That's one thing that we try to do here on, on Pro Wrestling this week is because uh, you're on TV one week and uh, the next week you're gone. And, of course, there's never an explanation uh, on television as far as why someone departs the Federation. Uh, it's just as though you never existed. Uh, that's what's happening right now. Uh, you were mentioned during the Survivor Series, but, of course, now you're off television and uh, the fans uh, just get very curious. Now, what happened to Bulldog? And now they could find out by listening to a program like this, at least some of the fans here in the New York area could find out where the Bulldog is. Uh, there are other opportunities that are waiting you uh, also in England. Uh, one of the uh, things that we've heard about, and uh, I don't know whether you want to comment on it or not, is a, is, a, is a television program over there that you might possibly get involved in. Uh, the Gladiators, something like the American Gladiators? Yeah, like the American Gladiators. Um, I was approached on that. They wanted me to be... Um, a gladiator in England, and I guess you call it the, the British gladiators, you know. And, uh-huh. um, they're, they're going to start doing the tapings around about uh, March or April, and um, I'm going to uh, be contacted by the producer again, uh, David Lesko, and um, uh, find out whether I'm going to be on the gladiators. So I've been, I'm still in training, you know. I'm, I feel a lot better since I've uh, finished right now with uh, Titan. Because, you know, I was getting pretty burned out on the road and flying every day from Anchorage to uh, Hawaii, back to L.A. in the same day, you know. And uh, so my body's rested up now, and I'm back in the gym training out again. So I'm going to get in pretty good shape for Japan. And 
hopefully do something on the uh, British Gladiator TV show and even some other TV shows in England, you know, whether it be uh, a comedy show or a, a game show, which I've done before, or the Muppets or you know, whatever, or going over there wrestling ind independently for another organization or whatever, you know, but I will be back in England doing things again, you know. That sounds great. Of course, you uh, had such a great tag team also, one of the best that people have ever seen, the British Bulldogs with yourself and Dynamite Kid. Uh, any possibility? I know uh, Ki uh, Dynamite Kid has been uh, retired due to back injury and the injuries. Uh, any chance of him ever coming back to work and perhaps you two teaming up again? I don't think so. He's. I think he made his mind up when he retired. He had his last match in Japan for uh, the... Uh, Shoei Baba's group, and he had his time at match, and uh, he, he had so much, so many problems with his back, you know, and yeah, had them two ruptured discs and his knees, and he took a pound, you know, he's in the business for almost 17 years, you know. And this is my, actually, my 15th year this uh, this this week, actually, in the business. You know, I started when I was 12, and I turned pro at 15, and I'm, I just turned 30 two days ago, and and this is my actually 15th year in the business. You wow. Know. And, of course, you had three runs with the WWF. and uh, Yeah, that's what I told Vince. And I told Vince, you know, I said it's my 15th year in the business. And uh, right now it was, you know, I looked at my uh, one of my sheets and they had me wrestling some, some guys I thought I shouldn't be wrestling, you know. And, uh, uh, I you know, I didn't like the way my career was going. So I said, you know, I didn't think my career was going to be going too much further right now in the WWF, so I better take my career somewhere else, you know. Yeah. But one thing which really puzzled me, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners, is that, uh, just due to the amazing uh, reaction over in Europe uh, with you winning the Intercontinental title and, and, and the way the WWF is uh, is making a ground in Europe and, and going over there now, we've heard uh, anywhere from 150 dates on up in 1993. Uh, it, to me, it would have been wise for them to... Uh, uh, to appease you and uh, keep that Intercontinental Championship belt around your waist, especially with those tours of Europe. You know, uh, I, I think they were just cutting their own throat by uh, uh, by not really pushing you in, in, in that capacity. Well, that, that was one of my big main uh, concerns, you know, was with, with the Europe thing, you know, because that was, I thought that was my deal in Europe was, was you know, me being over there and being the top dog kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, running, uh, running as much as they are, you know, over there, you think that um, they would uh, keep the top guy on top, you know. Mm -hmm. but it seems that they want to push the, some of the other guys down the people's throats to be on top. So that that's fine. That's uh, absolutely fine with me if that's the way they want to go. But um, I think they're in for a big shock if they think they can go to England and uh, Europe for 153 days. They'll, they'll burn it out just like they did uh, the rest of the United States. But they're even faster because Europe's, you know, a lot smaller than the States, you know. Yeah. Some of these cities, you know, um, you could run England, you know, like Wembley Stadium one time, that's it. Yeah, I think a once so a I year. I don't think they could they would sell it out again right now, especially oh. without me on the card. Yeah, that's, that's quite true, especially Wembley. Now, uh, I'd heard and I'd read in a, in a newsletter that uh, uh, it was pretty much uh, your idea that they go into Wembley in the first place. Yeah, well, it was, you know. The, um, I was over the on the one of the last tours we did after WrestleMania in the Hoosier Dome, and um, I went to the Freddie Mercury Mo Memorial Concert. Yeah. And um, I was over there with some members of the World Wrestling Federation, and I was sitting there watching the concert, and I said, you know, it would be a great idea is to have a big event like uh, WrestleMania, or even the better event would be SummerSlam in the Wembley Stadium, because everybody goes to England for uh, the vacation, you know, even people from the United States and all over Europe go to England for the vacation, and the kids are off school. It would be a great event. If you can sell out uh, Birmingham, Sheffield, and Wembley Arena in one week, which all the buildings have a, maybe a capacity of 20,000 people, you're looking at 60,000 people in one week. I think if you just run one big show like SummerSlam in uh, Wembley Stadium, they would uh, they would sell out. And uh, nothing else was said about it. And, and then I heard that uh, SummerSlam was going to be held in actually Washington Cap Center. Yeah. And... Uh, at the last minute, I got a phone call saying, we're going to change it, we're going to go to uh, Wembley Stadium. What do you think? And I said, I think it's a great idea, you know. Boy, that was just such a tremendous uh, was, crowd. Yeah. Just looking at the pay-per-view, and uh, it was, was just a... lot of people in the World Wrestling Federation uh, saying that um, oh, they, 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 were, they were hoping to get 50,000 tickets sold. You know, I said, no, it'll go all the way, believe me. Well, you know. Yeah. And then when they put the tickets on sale, 
boom, they went in less than four days. I said it would sell out without, within a week, and they said no, they would sell 50,000 tickets in about a month. And I said no, you know. And when it sold out, I got a call and said they sold out. I said, I told you it would, you know. And they said, you were right, you know. Well, it certainly did, and the fans were so enthusiastic. Uh, it, was just, uh, it was great to watch that particular show. And there was also a, a chance you'd been out with an injury, uh, a knee injury, that almost uh, forced you to uh, uh, to miss that show. Well, I, I actually missed the show, but, you know, quit wrestling altogether. Yeah. Um, I had a knee injury up in uh, in, in the Massachusetts area in Portland, Maine, and um, I banged my knee and I got staph infection. It's called staphylococcus. It's the worst uh, staph infection you can get. It eats the uh, starts eating your joint away, then your muscle away. And it was the most painful thing I'd ever gone through, and it was like right into six weeks, but right before SummerSlam, you know. And I came home and. Um, just had to go and see a specialist every day with my knee and have it drained and needles shoved in it and painkillers. And, and then I had to get in shape for SummerSlam, you know. I had to walk in the ring of SummerSlam in shape, which I did. I came, you know, I came through my end of the deal and I was there, you know. Well, I don't think uh, I was actually 100% for the match, but... It was a great match, nonetheless. Yeah, it was 100% anyway. Everybody here in the States, uh, you know, the newsletters who rate these things, uh, they all gave it four stars, and it was a... Uh, a lot of people felt it would be, a, be a, a short match because of the injury, and uh, it was a it was an emotional match. Uh, it had everything to it. It, it had, had everything, everything to it. It had everything to it, and um, 83,000 people on top of that. You know, you, you, just, you just can't beat that, you know. It's one of the one of the best shows. I think it's the best show Vince has ever done in the World Wrestling Federation. You know, I, I think it beats all the WrestleManias and all the Summer Slams. I, I, that's my feeling about it. You know, you got the electricity of the crowd, 83,000 people, you know, outdoors on a beautiful day in England. You know, you couldn't you couldn't beat it, you know. You also had a family issue involved uh, in that main event as well. Yeah, family. Yeah. <laughs> I had my wife at my throat every day. Yeah, well, that was, uh, well, it, it just added to the match and it added to the conclusion of the match and uh, it really gave everybody goosebumps who uh, got an opportunity to see it. Was that your biggest thrill as far as uh, that particular match? It, in, was, it was my biggest thrill ever in, in, the, in the wrestling business so far. Wow. I don't think it'll ever be topped. I don't think you can top Wembley Stadium. You know, 83,000 growing English fans. That's pretty hard to top, you know. Yes, indeed. Well, the wrestling business here in this country uh, over the last couple of years has taken a lot of hits uh, with the steroid scandals, with the other allegations uh, in the WWF, with the dropping attendance. Uh, it hasn't been a very good time for wrestling here in the States. Uh, Looking at it uh, from someone on the inside of the business, uh, do you have any predictions or any thoughts on uh, you know what the future of the wrestling business hit is here in the United States, and then maybe uh, give us uh, your opinions on what's uh, uh, going to happen uh, overseas over the next several months? Um, I don't know what I I, I just hope um, for the WWF and, and and even from you know as far as I go that you know that they do well overseas in Europe you know and and that and. Um, I think the wrestling will pick up and back up in the United States. Um, there was that, that that steroid scandal, what the WWF went through. You know, it went way. I think it was blown. You know, actually, way way out of proportion. You know, you know there was a lot of things true and a lot of things what wasn't true. You know, as far as certain people went. Uh, but Vince, as far as um, I know myself, because I've been through it with the WWF. That Vince has one of the best uh, steroid testing policies. Actually, I shouldn't just say steroids. That goes for any any kind of drug. You know, the steroids, marijuana, um, cocaine. You know, uppers, downers. He has the best uh, uh, policy right now. Drug policy going. He has Dr. Mario Di Pasquale doing that from Toronto, and mm -hmm. he's one of the best docs in the world. He tests all the uh, Olympians. And, uh, you know, there's no way you can get around Vince's uh, testing. If, if you pass the test, you pass it, and if you fail, you get suspended. It's as simple as that, you know, and he has, uh, I don't think he has any any favorites in the in the, in the the wrestling business. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. Well, there was certainly a lot of heat put on the organization, uh, you know, from this reporter included, uh, uh, when it went down. And uh, a lot of people feel it did get out of proportion at some points, and, uh, the business really seems to be cleaned up now regardless. Uh, it, it just seems to be that way as far as uh, that problem. Um, but, uh, you know, it just, it just each individual's uh, own personal preference, and uh, uh, it did get out of proportion there for a while. Yeah, it, it did, you know, and, and um, 
<laughs> everything, you know, as far as I know, is back to normal with that now. You know, um, I mean, you know, Vince could stop right now and say, okay, I'm not going to test you guys no more. You know, if you want to do whatever you want to do, you know, but he's still got the drug policy going, which is which is good because it makes, I think it makes everybody healthy. You know, you don't want to, I've never had uh, the experience, but it would, you know, with going in the ring with somebody who's on some kind of drug, you know, and uh, they don't know where they are or what they're doing, yeah. you know, and they're throwing your body around, they could actually kill you, you know. Yeah. So I think um, he's keeping the, uh, that so the aspect goes with the business of drugs is uh is keeping that you know really good well getting I done. think down the line if all the wrestlers are clean like that uh, I think there should be something for the wrestlers too you know yeah well it just it like, just it, WCW if, if you're clean and with them that uh, they give you 10 or 20 percent at the end of the year on your contract mm-hmm. you know, if, if you clean with Titan, you don't get there's nothing. You don't get nothing at the end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're looking at it both sides of the fence. So a lot of people felt well, just the grueling schedules that especially Titan had, uh, especially in the mid '80s, uh, uh, traveling double shots. Uh, you know how could uh, a lot of wrestlers stay away from some things that would tempt them? Uh, but uh, you know, getting off of that subject, uh, we have a big personal appearance with you coming up uh, here in the New York area, and uh, that'll be on December 26th. Uh, it'll take place uh, here in Long Island. At Farmingdale Lanes, and uh, it'll be yourself, and also uh, we've just added uh, Jim the Anvil Nineheart. Uh, you'll be signing autographs for the fans at uh, Farmingdale Lanes and Comac Lanes right here. And uh, uh, do you enjoy appearances like this? Yeah, I love them. You know, I get to see the fans and meet and greet them and uh, take pictures with them, sign autographs, tips, or whatever they want me to sign. And um, uh, Jim Knight, uh, you know, really loves doing that. You know, he's over in Japan right now. I called him up and let him know that um, he's going to be with me, you know, and he was really pleased. He likes getting out there and making sure that everybody knows he's, his face is still there and he's still Jim the Anvil Knight. Uh, the same, there's a big old strong anvil that he is, you know. He's going to be there too, and I'm looking forward to doing that on December the 26th. Well, that's great, and uh, we really appreciate the time you've given us here today, Davey, and uh, uh, we want to wish you and your family the happiest of holidays and uh, continued success with your career and uh, your adventures overseas in Japan and uh, so many other independent promoters that will be talking to you in the near yep. future. Thank you very much. Okay, Davey, thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me just shut this off here. Okay, promo... Three, two, one. Hey, this is the British Bulldog, and I just want to wish everybody out there have a great Christmas and have a happy new year. Okay, and one more. Uh, different. Uh, yeah, one different. Uh, just one saying hi. This is British Bulldog. Uh, you're listening to Pro Wrestling This Week on WNYG AM. Hold on, hold on for a second, okay? Sure. What's that say? W? Uh, W-N-Y-G. W-N-Y-G. What, what would I call this? You call wrestling in...